How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the great Game of Thrones nerd off the spoiler casty type thing where we talk about the latest episode of Game of Thrones, what we thought of it, what happened, you know, what we think is going to happen next, all that kind of thing. I'm joined by Ellen. Hi. Hello. I Hi. am Ellen. I am Liam. Ellen. I should probably mention that as well, right? I'm Liam. <laughs> um, so, kind of the interesting thing already from this season is that it's going off of like away from the books so but a lot of people who'd seen the older seasons as they if they'd read the books they knew what kind of what to expect but this is all complete sort of speculation now because we don't know what the fuck's gonna happen do we so it's quite exciting yeah it is quite exciting like i had known as i think at least half the audience kind of what was going to happen to these characters up until the last season to some extent, I know Sansa's story was kind of changed a lot in terms of what happened to her. Um, but everything else seemed to follow the kind of plot um, that was in the book. So this is the first time that people won't really have an idea of what's going to happen. It's kind well, of the yeah. first time. We've also got our theories, haven't we? But, yeah, got yes. a lot of theories. But <laughs> so I suppose we'll go get into some of what we think is going to happen and stuff as we go through. But episode yep. one was called The Red Woman, and that kind of gives you an indication, like the biggest... Like We'll say right from the start we're going to talk full spoilers the entire way through. So if you have not seen the first episode yet, do not watch this video. Go watch the episode, then come back and tell us what you thought of it and all that sort of stuff. Like We are spoiling it all the way through. But, you know, big warning. But yes, so it's called Red Woman, and that's because uh, she's kind of, Although she only appears, like, twice in the whole episode, I guess her, what happens to her is probably the biggest thing that happens, I guess. Most you know, out of everything that happens. Most definitely, especially because, like, she doesn't really say very much, if at all, really, throughout the entire... No, like, two this lines of dialogue, episode. if that. Yeah. Even in, since the last episode of last season, she really didn't have a ton of dialogue after the whole incident with Stannis and the burning of his daughter and all this kind of stuff. She really didn't. She really closed off and kind of drew away. So she really hasn't said anything. So maybe that's what it made it more jarring, possibly, the kind of what happened in the episode as well. Yeah, so I mean, what the way the episode finishes, we'll we'll kind of go through this, I guess, of sort of, I, mean, I guess, I see by seed, we'll go from so yeah, start to finish and break out because, like, the interesting thing, obviously, is how the episode finishes. The whole episode, sort of overall, is kind of just reminding you of who's still alive, essentially, because like there's just <laughs> yeah. a, a, a one scene for every plot line, pretty much, apart from. Bran wasn't in this one, but no, no one gives a fuck about Bran. He's literally the most boring character in Game of Thrones. So he Good really man. is at this point. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, there was like a looking forward kind of thing at the end, but that's the thing. Still. Making stuff up for his storyline just because he's so insanely boring. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I have to agree. Yes. So at the start of the episode, we see Jon Snow's face. He's definitely dead. He's very much dead. Um, like his mates and Davos find him just lying in the snow. They sort of drag him into a room, and then they sort of uh, I guess they plan on what they're going to do. And all their mate, all of his mates, want to go and stab Thorn in the face for what he's done. Melisandre turns up and it's like, "Oh dear, he's dead." That's, that's generally how the show opens. Yeah. There was a lot of kind of speculation, somewhat from fans, if he was really dead. And I know that the showrunners um, had previously stated that, yeah, he was dead. But I guess this is kind of like, that. yeah, he's dead. This is his dead body. Well, so do you remember, I think it was season four. I think it was season four, the scene where um, the Hound and Arya are in this cave and Hound has a duel one-on-one -on -one with this guy who's a mm. follower of the, you know, the Lord of Light sort of thing. He, he kills yes. him and then he gets revived, mm -hmm. doesn't yes. he? He gets brought back to yes. life. And I think that's essentially what's going to happen. Like, Mother Sand's like, he's dead. I need him to not be dead. Let's bring him back to life with my like magic juju powers, basically. Magic, magic juju, yes, very much. Because the people who, because there is a, like a, I guess it's this is what's in the books. I won't 
talk too much. But there is there this is, is full there's, spoilers it's, going out. It's full spoilers. Well, in the books, okay. So there's a character called Lady Stoneheart in the books. Yes. Who is um, basically Caitlin Stark reanimated, but she's not her. She's kind of a walking, very vengeful kind of being. And like the idea is that these people who follow the Lord of the Light can bring people back to life to do their bidding. There has been some kind of fan theory out there that um, Melisandre will bring John back to life in order to live this kind of prophesied life of this. I can't remember what the name of this king was, but it was a um, a prophecy that was made that this king will come back and reign and make things better, at least. Yes, the thing is, like with Stoneheart, and that she does come back, but she's kind of almost like a zombie, kind of. She's not, not her. So, like, if if John came back, he would he would sort of be like a husk of himself, I guess. Be yeah, he wouldn't it. be him. It'd be someone else in his body, almost. Yeah. So, I think that's one interesting thing. Also, like what she said at the end of that scene where he's on the table when she goes up, and she's like. You know, she can't quite understand what's going on because her visions have never been wrong. And when Stannis lost, she was kind of shocked. I mean, she um, wanted to burn a baby alive or a yeah, small child much. alive. Yeah, she so, did. So she know. really believed in it. And she says when he's on the table, she says, like, I saw him in the flames fighting at Winterfell. But also, I mean, like, technically that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Because like he could still come back and fight there, just not as just not yet. him. Yeah. So yeah. So that's I don't know because her visions are incredibly like, cha- you know, they kind of are very fluid and highly open to interpretation. So. Yeah. So then we went see. from there. Uh, we went to a Night's Watch meet. Uh, I quite like the notes I made for this bit. Thor convinces yes. everyone that he's not a complete dickhead. That was the essential yeah. thing. Like all of the brothers who weren't aware that he'd shanked John, he, mm. he he basically held a big meeting to explain why he'd done it, and that oh, I'm not a bad guy. I did what he told me to, and then I stabbed him. Mm. So I'm a good person, <laughs> really. Um, because he's an idiot. He doesn't know that all the White Walkers are coming to numb on mm. his face. So mm. he's naive and stupid. So. And also, so because nice. John didn't tell them, I don't think John told them what happened at Hardhorn. I, yeah, I don't think he, he got a got an opportunity to, did he? No, he didn't. And so the only people that they knew were his friends. Quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the the handful of knights who were there with him, which are the ones who are in the room with Sedavos. Yeah, pretty much. So he can wax lyrical all day of how you know John let all these you know the wildlings in, and he's ruined us, and like he's going to kill us. But in the end, you know. <laughs> the, the wildlings are the ones that are going to keep them alive. He he was just, just jealous. He's just jealous yeah. of how amazing John is, and that he has a wolf. That's basically what it boils down to, I think, is he he got snubbed to be the commander, didn't he? So he's like, mm, yes, he did. Bit of a fucking dick. <laughs> a <little laughs> to be honest. Bit. Yeah. Yes. So that that helped. was quite a short scene, but. Mm. And how easily he wins them over as well is kind of. I know. It's, <laughs> just, it's, it's the whole safe part thing. Just rabble, 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 rabble. Like they just, yep. if if a man says a thing, then we agree with that <laughs> thing, basically, <laughs> essentially. But then after that, moved on to Roose Bolton. Like he's my most hated character. Like I think I hate him even more than I did Joffrey at the height of his oh. knobheadery. I think. Oh. He's just a, like what he did to Theon. Just yeah. Shocking. But like, um, so in the I think it was the last episode of the last season, his he uh, Roose has got a thing for this girl who worked on the farm and stuff, and she died trying to kill Sansa before she escaped. And I think, if I remember correctly, Sansa pushed her off like a like off a roof. Isn't that how yeah, you, how um, she pegged it? Yeah. So um. As Sansa was trying to leave the castle with Theon, uh, oh, sorry, came... yes, Ramsay, no, Roose is his dad. And so yes. um, he came up to uh, the, she was coming up to Sansa and she was saying, "I'm going to like take you back to Ramsay and he will do yeah. speak horrible things to you and I'll watch and laugh." And then Theon actually did something for once and threw her off the side of this battlement. Yeah. And then they jumped into the snow and ran off. So he 
he was kind of mourning her. But even though he's supposed to be married, you know. Yeah, even though he's supposed to be married. <laughs> but also, just the way he talked about her was like he really loves um, violent things, and so. And she was the only person who stood up to him basically and wasn't afraid of, like you know, his bullying sort of ways. I guess. Pretty much, and then yeah. he's like just feed it to the dogs, and I'm like, well, Fair enough. okay. <laughs> I mean, it kind of just kind of caps the kind of relationship they had that was incredibly violent and somewhat yeah. non-caring. Yeah, and then following that, he he then goes on. He sees his dad, um, and they confirm that Stannis is dead because we didn't actually see the kill and blow uh, in mm. the last season, but they say Stannis is now dead. And I mean, it, with Game of Thrones, I could still mean he's alive because you, you know, it's what the show is. No, he could still somehow be alive. But, That's uh, true. But yeah, so he basically says that he needs all of the North to get together, and um, they need to unite with Sansa at the helm almost because she they want her to kind of be the face of it, I guess. So mm-hmm. he wants you know Sansa and Theon to be brought in. Um, then you cut to a scene of Sansa and Theon being caught but then Brienne turns up with Pod and they stab a bunch of dudes save him, Theon helps as well so it's just further thing of him sort of becoming himself and not being you know, Ramsay's little bitch I guess yeah anyway. pretty much I think it's it's nice to see Theon do something for so long Theon just did nothing but Cry well, he did have, have certain time. pieces of his anatomy cut off. He did have his... To be fair, uh, somewhat unwillingly. He did, <laughs> somewhat unwillingly, somewhat, and then mailed to his father. But it yes. was nice to see, yeah, it was nice to see Brienne and Podrick. Because Brienne has been sitting around kind of waiting to do something as well. So this was like, especially because she's been waiting at this point probably years to fulfill the promise she made to Caitlin about looking yeah. after the two Thing girls. Is, would you personally accept her oath? Because she swore oath to Renly. He got his yeah. face eaten by a demon baby ghost thing. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> then said, oh, I'll protect you, Caitlin. Now. Then she got stabbed like 30 times at a wedding. Yeah. It's like, mm, I, I'm starting to think you're a bad luck, to be honest. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, she but is- no thanks. I think that she, yeah, it's kind of one of those bad hero syndromes where she, like, is so capable, but yet attracts so much always danger with wrong, her. Yeah, always on the wrong side, right? Like. Yeah. I think, yeah, I like the emotion in it, and I, I think she knows that this is kind of her last chance to actually kind of do what she always wanted to do, which is to be somebody's kind of protector, I guess. And she was supposed to bring Jamie home alive, and his hand got chopped off. As yeah, well. that, that, that happens as too. well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go very well. But yeah, so now Brienne's protecting Sansa, so there's there's like a team of four now. Yep. As a thing, so it, like all of the all of the characters in in this episode, none of their plot lines get further too much. You just sort of you know you let know who's still alive and just mm. the general gist of what's going to happen next. I think yep. that's very much an intro to the series. But then yep. after that, what was next? Oh, Jamie comes home next. Yeah. It's the next bit. Comes home on like a little boat with the coffin with their daughter. And he comes home with Marcella's see, body, yeah. Yeah, and you see like probably the most human moment from Cersei you have ever seen. Yeah. Right. That's the only good thing in her life is is her kids. I mean, some even to a certain extent. Yeah, some of her kids. Actually, her daughter probably... Because she's had the least influence on her daughter's life. Because her daughter lived in um, Dawn. Dawn for however bloody long she was there for, which was quite a, quite a few years, living with um, the Martells. So her daughter is like this kind of bastion of hope, really, for her because she was taken away when she was young. And like she's kind of been, she hasn't really been touched by any of their kind of family nonsense. And so that's kind of the death of everything. That was hopeful, I guess, which might be an interesting push for her to go away from being somewhat invested in 
trying to make things better, at least for her family, to actually just being a source of destruction. She always was, but at least she had something centering her. She has nothing now. I mean, her son, the king, has kind of abandoned her to some extent not, as well. Not necessarily willingly. Like, he's mm. sort of trapped by his own people. Like, he's, yeah. he's very much been manipulated, like, mm. you know, pretty much all of his life. Yeah, pretty but, much. And now she's... Also, like, this is all of her own doing, especially because she chose to put the faith in charge. And then, because they were religious fanatics, they obviously didn't want to follow her in the end. They punished her, and now her son is at their mercy, so. Yes. Was that the next scene? I've, I don't think I actually wrote notes about the, the scene with the religious um, fanatic people. Th- there was the scene. Like, was that in... the next scene? I think yeah, there was. There was. A, there with, was, um... it was a a scene in the cell with Marjorie and it yeah. was one that yeah it was the next bit yep um being asked to con- uh, confess tell her sins tell her sins yes the thing that she hasn't done the thing that basically. she hasn't done which is interesting because Marjorie even though she's she knows all these secrets about everybody and she's never actually colluded so much in anything like she's always like even with Joffrey's death she was somewhat in quite in the dark if she knew that someone was maybe going to do something she she didn't know who it was because she seemed somewhat surprised when her grandmother told her and also she knew that her brother was gay but she never I mean she, she you know what I mean like she never actually did anything that was could be considered like insidious so much she's so that was the most interesting thing. She just kept the a one... secret, basically. Yeah, keeping secrets got her in trouble, it seems like. Yes. But that, that not too much happened on that front. They're, they're just letting you know that she's still in a prison, basically. And yeah, they, and they, that she's going to have lot... something to do. Yeah. And, um, the, uh, I can't remember the actor who plays the, the leader of the sect. I can't remember his name, but he's... He's still very much in control, you know. And he's oh, very deceptively much nice. Like he he plays off like he's like this kind, warm, and old man. But like you can tell he's, you know, he's really pulling the strings. Oh, very much so. The sparrow, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I can't remember. What, that's gonna bug me. The name of the actor who plays him. But um, so then after that, we go over to Dawn. I think this was probably like the worst handled scene in the episode like i see why they did what they did but like the the thing that kind of pissed me off the most about it is the bodyguard the massive fucking dude <laughs> with a massive halberd he just gets stabbed in the shoulder and then it's like yeah, okay bye you're done now so oh, it was well, a little bit right like then. that do you know what i mean it was just it was yeah. kind of anticlimactic everything like, everything in dawn has always bored the hell out of me i just just like everything that leads back to dawn it is the whole last season with all that storyline with Dawn and Jamie and you know it would just it bored the hell out of me I really couldn't care less for it um I know there was some talk I know that it's important to like furthering this storyline of like the Lannisters and how isolated they are I guess yes everyone versus that do you think out of interest that Dawn are gonna ally with um Roos because, like, you know, they share the common hatred of the Lannisters. Quite possibly. Or they might end up they might end up siding with Marine, possibly, because they do live on an island. Well, not really on an island, but they live in a coastal area. So they could, I mean, possibly, they're quite far away from one another. But, may, I mean, it might be an interesting kind of south and north kind of tackle, I guess, on King's Landing, because they're both kind of born, they're both on either side of it. But... I just, I mean, there's always been talk of like the sans, I mean, like the sand sisters and like them being very much into poison. Obviously, that's how they kill in the cellar. But I mean, I guess there could have been poison in the what well, they stabbed in the back with. But I was just, I'm really nonplussed on anything to do with all. I mean, it's interesting. Mm, I'm hoping but I'm it's nonplussed. building to something. Yeah, I'm hoping we never have to go back to Dawn, and maybe we can just take them somewhere else. <laughs> they just, well, it's. It's sad because Oberyn was actually a really cool character, and I actually really liked him. Um, but mm. obviously, they kept to the books with his storyline and had the mountain squish his head. But mm. it's just such a shame because he was actually a really cool character. I liked him, it- like really flamboyant and in- insanely talented. Like really, just like really likable. Like he's, he had yeah. family at heart and. 
I liked him a lot. Oberon was interesting. And also I, I bought his um, passion behind why he was so passionate about trying to get revenge avenge his Lannisters. sister. Yeah. I don't buy any of the the revenge plot that Ilyara has, which is his wife. Um, yeah. I don't buy any of that. I think she's just power crazy. That's that's fair enough. I mean, them are. But I just have, yeah. I'll be, I mean, it's interesting to see where it goes, but... Mm. So, yeah, that was a thing. Dawn... They're, they're pushing Dawn as being a thing, I guess. And, I mean, I think it'll only be interesting if they then mingle with something else. So, like, if they, you know, they take a side with someone else, basically. It's the only way I think their storyline becomes kind of interesting. But then, much. after that, over to Tyrion. He tries to eat someone's baby. That's what we can learn from yeah. that. <laughs> That's what we can learn from that scene. Valerian, apparently. Yeah, he's, but, he's not so good with his language, it, it no, turns out. Which is interesting because he's always been talked about as the person who knows how to fix everything, who's the good yeah. talker. And then the one time when it's something incredibly innocuous that comes up as something incredibly evil he wants to say. So, your baby, I'll give you a coin to eat it. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah. <It's> like, <laughs> you monster. But yeah. So yeah. Yeah, the, uh, he walks through the town. Um, he's been shown the ropes um, of like what's going on. Like after Daenerys is left with the harpies, just stabbing everyone really and just causing chaos. And then the scene sort of wraps out with uh, like the the harbor, all of the ships of which they'd amassed to cro- you know cross over to Westeros. They've all been set fire to more than likely by the harpies. Like I, you well, don't know that yet, but you know it's it's kind of obvious. Yeah. So, kind of the whole point of like there was some you know, those huge kind of massive Ford Ford kind of drivers for dinner is to get like boats and even from the first season the idea that people need boats and things like that. Now they've just been completely just burnt into the sea. So there's none of those left. So that kind of pushes the idea that that kind of vision that Bran had of a dragon flying over King's Landing a little bit further. Yeah, that'll just be her and her dragon. And yeah. that's about it, really, at this point. That's all you really need, though, because those things are massive. And, like, this is true. She doesn't even have to get off it. If she stays up high enough, I mean, <laughs> it'll be fine. Just spam fireballs from miles away. Pretty much. Yes. So, yeah, like, that... Not too much happened with that. You just find out that there's sort of like an underground grass movement that, like, even though the harpies are sort of taken over, um, people still want Daenerys back, even though things all went to tits a bit. Yeah, you know, she still and got, was... she still got her support there. Yeah, and the red priest, very interesting. Like, have like the the idea of like the Lord of the Light brought to Marine. Yes. Not for the first time. We've seen we've seen that that sect that religion in. Um, one of the towns before Marine, when Tyrion was trying to make his way there to see her, so it has been moving from Westeros to yeah. Marine. So I mean, that kind of ties up some of the kind of like ideas that people have had around the way that John's storyline and Daenerys' storyline cross at some point. So that's, that's like what one... everyone wants in it: John and his yeah. wolf, Daenerys and her dragon. They just go wreck <laughs> everyone. That's 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 the end goal. That's what we want. Them yep. to me up because you know we know they're related, whether mm. like, the game's gonna the show is gonna remit it yet or not. Mm. But we know that, so that's yes. that's the end goal. That's what I mean. That's they're gonna drag out for a couple more seasons before we get that, no doubt. But <laughs> yep. So but then, they did just go for another seventh season. I think they just got renewed for one. So. They did. Like I think yep. that was like a couple of days ago, wasn't it? Yep. That's not exactly news to anyone, is it? Of course, it's going to get another season, but that's like one of the biggest selling shows of all time ever. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so then from that, went on to Jorah. He's sitting on his horse. Him and um, Daenerys' boyfriend still hunting for uh, <laughs> going wandering around in the fields and stuff. They find her, um, it was a ring, weren't it? They found yeah, it was her just, engagement ring. Yeah. Um, they're having a conversation saying, she's mine. No, she's mine. No, she's mine. <laughs> and like, they're basically bickering over who yeah. gets to knob her, basically. Um, yeah, they were, yeah, so Dario and Jora kind of talking back and forth about, like, her and, like, how wonderful she is and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And then there's, like, kind of, like, he, there's kind of your reminded again at the beginning of the episode with the flashback and in that scene that he has grayscale. So yeah, um, his when time he's is away, incredibly he pulls limited. Up his, um, 
up his shirt to show that he's still got the grayscale crawling up his arms. Yep. So but I do I wonder don't know if that's curable that. with like this whole Lord of Light plot line, whether they're going to say that they can use their sort of magical powers to cure him. I think that's Maybe. a possibility. I'm interested to see how long he has left with that. I don't well, know how I think it'll come to a head by the end of the season, whichever yeah, well, by the end happens. Of the um, yeah. And yeah, so they find the engagement ring, find and uh, they you know they follow the tracks and stuff, and they know that she'd been captured by Dothraki. Mm. That's that's the big thing. Like they they're on to the trail as such. They know mm. she's been picked up, and then we go over to her. It's, yeah, it's the next scene, um, and she's being taken to the new. Uh, Carl Moro, his name is Carl Moro. Moro. Yeah, yeah. So she's being dragged back to um the great the base Red Sea area <laughs> where she kind of fought so hard to get out of. Um, yeah, and it's quite funny because they don't realise that she can speak their language quite yet. So they're talking mm. about how, all the things they're going to do to her and stuff, and she's like, "Oh mm. my god, you pigs!" <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> what's really until my dragon yeah. turns up. Yeah, pretty much. What's really interesting about that is that, like, it's a very big kind of three... It's a huge, like, just 180 for her character from going from where she was to where she is now. Like, it's essentially how she started off in it. In, yeah, in season pretty... one, is she was, she's being sold to, yeah. to well, Drogo time, yeah. by her brother to try and get an army. And now she's being given to a new Carl, basically. Yeah. And the kind of conversations is that she wouldn't have really been that bothered by i mean like in the first season i think her brother um he says to her like i would let you i let his entire army have sex with you if it meant that i could have my army and she was kind of somewhat nonplussed about that like she didn't really seem too affected by when he said that to her she seemed very blank whereas in this this kind of the scene where the, they're on the they're on the horses and she's next to them walking um it's very somewhat it's a little bit similar in terms of the nature of it, because they're saying they're basically just going to share her, but her disgust is a lot more obvious on her face. So she's definitely changed. She thinks higher of herself. Yeah, yeah rightly so. Definitely. But then, so then, throughout the scene, you see her. She meets the new Carl. She reveals her hand that she, you know, was married to Drogo, and they said, "Oh, so you're a widow. You've got to go and live in a cave with all the other widows now." So yeah. that's that's essentially what's what's. Um, you know the intent for her storyline is that they they want to send her off to this cave. I don't know. I don't know what's actually like what whether it's actually a cave or what it is. I I wonder if it's a metaphor for saying that we're going to kill you off. Like, I don't do you know what I mean? So. Like, think of it saying like, "Oh, we're sending you to the afterlife where the others <laughs> wait for their husband sort of thing. Oh, you know? I think they, yeah, they called it the temple or uh, the temple in Vast Dothrak, which must be in the same area. But maybe it, I mean, maybe it's a temple where they go to become like the priest, uh, priestesses, yeah, so they get possibly. sacrificed or something. Yeah, I did like her speech about um because there's a because everything's about being sold and women being property, right? In that culture, so yeah. Women are traded like being uh, like objects, and so she kind of says like, "I will never give anyone sons or anyone." I mean, it's very kind of this very kind of Queen Elizabeth ish moment where she's like, "I am nobody's person but my own," which I quite liked. I really do enjoy when she does those kind. Even though they're a little bit overstated, some to some extent, I do enjoy when she says things like that. That's just because making a dominant female character in it. Like... Yeah, it is, and means that her kind of like importance isn't really based on what she can produce, I guess you'd say, in ER or anything like that. Yes. So from that went on to Arya. She is blind and to, you know, hit home that she's blind, they smack her with a stick. They did. They did we got that. a bit of a daredevil Rocky montage type thing <laughs> where uh, the girl who she's been training with uh, turns up with a stick, gives her a stick, and then she just beats the shit out of her. And this is same time tomorrow so <laughs> yeah. essentially yeah. so i think the, like they're just tr- training her to use her senses and mm-hmm. you know become yeah. another faceless yeah so the wave turns up that i mean because you don't really know who that character is anyway she could be using one of the many faces as exactly well. there's a good it chance seems... that she is the bloke like she, there's a good chance she is him 
Like, yep. You never know, do you? Like, cause even though we know there's two different people, we don't know that he didn't take her face for that scene. Yeah. You know. We don't know who anyone, anyone is. And I like the, I mean, like, the idea of losing your sight, especially for Arya, because Sieg has been, like, her most important thing always, very much. Yeah. I mean, like, she's never, everything, seeing and the idea of looking has been very important for her. Her whole kind of season four story arc was very much based around the idea of looking for something with the Hound. And so they've actually taken everything that was kind of important to her away and making her actually do something else, which isn't, I like that. So it becomes yeah. less about seeing and more than actually listening. Because I'm, uh, I'm enjoying her storyline of turning her into mm-hmm. like the ultimate ninja assassin. I well, mean, yeah. The only problem is it's getting <laughs> to the point where the longer she spends away from Westeros, the all the people she wants to kill are just getting like knocked off anyway. So she'll become an amazing ninja assassin and then have no one left to assassinate because they'll all be dead by that point anyway. Mm-hmm. It seems like, so, going to kill Joffrey, <laughs> going to kill Joffrey. Oh, wait, he's dead. All right. Um, next, like, <laughs> it's getting to that point, I think. It but is like, getting better. I mean, hopefully, I want just... her to be the one who kills Cersei. That's that's my I'd hope. Like that. I want her to be the one who finishes her off. I'd like that a lot. I'd like that a lot. I want to be the person Sansa. Of Sansa I'd I want be fine her... with. As well. Actually, Sansa would be interesting. I want something. I want Sansa to like, actually get some backbone. Yeah. I mean, she has, but I wanted to actually do something rather she than just to, be a She needs to around. be the one to kill Ramsay. She needs to yes, just she has no- to. chop his knob off. And yes. That needs to happen. That needs to happen. So, uh, we get to, after that, we get to the end of the episode, the last scene, and this is where things go batshit crazy a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> oh, I just, uh, so... Thorn goes up to the room where Davos and uh, John's like group of friends who were with him when they, he went uh, past the wall and fought the White Walkers. Like they're all holed up in this room with John's body, and uh, his wolf is there too. And he offers them amnesty. Basically, he says, "Oh, if you come out, we'll be nice and that." Even though he's got like thirty dudes with crossbows aimed at that door, <laughs> so we'll totally, definitely not stab you because uh, we're we're not that kind of people. Absolutely not. And then they said, "Like Davos, yeah, you can you can go safe. We promise." And they're like, "Yeah, fucking right." <laughs> basically, they know that he's full of shit and just is trying to lure him out. Um. <laughs> That's, that's a general so it's just leading to a a point where um mm. it's a dip. like a showdown which is probably gonna happen next episode i guess the next this one or the next one with because he says like obviously melisandre is like really important to what's ever gonna happen next mm, which we'll get onto in a second which we'll get onto in a second yeah. so like they're just waiting on her because like they can't actually i mean they can't go anywhere because they can't take the body with them because as soon as they step out, out of that little room, they're, they're just dead anyway. So they're very much at the mercy of everybody in that room. Yeah. Davos seem, doesn't seem to be too worried about it, maybe just because he's so used to the idea of like actually possibly dying all the time. And he and nearly did. also so. he knows what uh, Melisandre can do. He's fully yeah, aware he of her, uh, her weirdness, which is yeah. how the show ends. So you see her in her bedroom. She's looking at the, flo- uh, at the fire and then she, her necklace that you never ever see her take off in any of the episodes previous to something you don't really think about until you see this and realise it she takes off her necklace she looks in the mirror and she's suddenly a very old lady and what's worse is she took all of her clothes off first so you see normal boobs then you see very 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 old boobs it's, very very old boobs <laughs> it was, oh god <laughs> That's a scene just, that most people won't forget in a hurry, I'll be no, honest. She, <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think, yeah. So she take yeah, I think it's just, because well, I think something that the, the show has been heavily criticised for is for, like, sexualising women's bodies. That's what they, that's what people say. Like, all it does is show naked women, right? And There's so... Plenty, I would count that there are plenty of dicks throughout the whole penis, show. There are plenty <laughs> like, of pretty penises I everywhere. Bias, I think I think it's as biased as people make out. I think it's True. pretty even. Yeah. In all but there's like, yeah, so there's been this huge kind of like focus in the media on the idea that somehow the show is sexualizing women. Some like previous cast members have said things like that. So really what it does is it goes, okay, so we're going to show you this really 
beautiful woman, right? And then we're just going to completely turn it around on you and give you everybody (laughs) exactly what you would not see ever. I mean, you don't really see. I mean, I don't know, depending what you want. You don't really see older people's bodies naked, right? Because it's kind of like a body in disrepair. It's completely broken down. Everything's kind of decaying in a way, yeah, right? Getting saggy, so and you're wrinkly. getting it. You're saggy, wrinkly, and you're dying, right? So this is like death in a way. Um, so is that's one interesting thing it does, and also because she like actually looks at herself. So it's kind of taking that 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 gaze away from, I guess you'd say, the audience, and she's refracting it back on herself, actually judging herself, which is interesting. So I think, like, aside that, the whole point of it is that it's showing off, like, some of the abilities. Because clearly, like, the the version of herself as an old lady is her real self. Mm. And that the necklace she has is what's given her the appearance of youth. So yeah, it's, it's, it's what it is the necklace, the stone or something, is giving her an ability as, yeah, to glamour herself. Yeah, it's got to be that red gem that she has in her necklace, mm. which just shows just how insanely powerful she is basically and mm. it just makes it quite scary I, I, you maybe don't want to mess with her if she can make you yeah. like an old lady it made me not and also maybe because <laughs> she's never she never really something that i didn't think about until i saw that was like you never really see her do anything incredibly physical so i'm wondering if she actually really is she's only got the strength of her real self real self which yeah Quite possibly. Because like when you never... see her get in bed, which is how this uh, episode closes out, she's very frail, very slow in the way she moves. And, I mean, normally she moves it, you know, uh, normally, I guess you'd say. She, like, she kind so of I guess, way, yeah. yeah, so I guess maybe she has some semblance of extra strength or, you know, mm. ability to use her body when she's pretending to be young. You know, possibly. Yeah. But I think, so... Because this is episode one, um, I thought maybe we should just go over like roughly what we think is going to happen. Like the series, as we said, we don't know um, what's going to happen because it's gone away from the books now. It's its own canon, so mm. we don't know any of the plot lines. It's all speculating. So I thought, shall we go through the characters quickly but to, to wrap yes. up, and then like uh, when the, after the last episode, we can just see how horrendously how wrong we wrong were. We were. <laughs> yeah exactly so john what do you think happens with john i think john is going to be reanimated by uh, melisandre into some uh reimagined version of the one of the um night's watch original uh people yeah and gonna kick ass and then take on everybody with the wildlings yeah, I think I think, I think that I think that too, and I think that happens next episode. I think it happens as soon as because it needs to happen like really sharpish because they're in a bit they're, they're a bit fucked mm. currently. No, I think you would, that, I think that you would say yeah, episode. you would think they would do that, but the way that they move in the show is so glacial <laughs> that this that is could true. take that could be the, the last episode. The yeah. It could be, and it probably will be. True, I mean, but I would like to see I would, it happen. I, would, I say next episode, but I mean, like, as in the next time that storyline is furthered, because oh. obviously we've got Bran, and they might just ignore hit that thing completely for an episode or two. You never know, do you? Yeah, pretty much. So, it could just not be there next episode. Uh, so, what do you think happens with Brienne, Pod, Sansa, Theon? Now I that think, they're all together, I reckon that all of them are going to end up dying for Sansa. Do you reckon? I think okay. so. I think I, Theon will definitely die for Sansa. I think, I think, I think his story Theon dies arc too this season. Yeah, I think he has to die. I think that his story arc has kind of come to an end. I, I, um, think, I, think, Br- I think Brienne survives personally because her thing is I think Sansa dies. Because yeah. I, I because Brienne is always a character who's whoever she serves dies. So mm-hmm. I feel like maybe maybe ramsay kills her whether it's by mistake or intentionally i think i think uh sansa dies this season and i wouldn't be terribly sad if she it would be an interesting plot twist most definitely if she did die because then brianne's kind of got to go make her own future then herself. she's like no what i guess yeah what is life now <laughs> exactly true i mean if that did happen they've got nowhere to go with that character anymore have they so maybe mm-hmm. maybe not well, at least uh, somehow she gets back to yeah. Littlefinger. I don't know. Maybe. 
So what about Jamie and Cersei? Do you think it happens with the Lannisters? I reckon they're just all going to die very painful deaths. I think Jamie to me... No, I think it's going to be... I don't think they'll be able to, right at the end of the season, whatever the last season will be, they will last until then, I'm pretty sure. Jamie may not. I'm... I feel like Jamie's story is lacking in terms of motivation, um, other than just pure revenge. At this point, there's nothing really yeah. much there. Um, I mean, his, his kids have been murdered, so... Yeah, that's because they're murdered, yeah, pretty much. And... He keeps on going back to his sister, who is entirely destructive. So all the progress that he kind of made in previous seasons has not so much been, un- well, depending on how you view that, that episode from last season, it it somewhat has been undone. So I think that they will both die very horrible deaths. I think that Cersei will probably end up being flayed alive. Do you reckon or Cersei just- is the big death of this season? Because there's usually a big death per season. I think a Sansa. Sansa's the big death this season. I think I think Sansa... I think they're going to keep Cersei right until the end. I think I she'll think survive to the final season. She'll survive to the final last episode. Jamie might die. Um, maybe... I can't think of many, many other people. I mean, like, maybe Jamie. Probably probably Jorah will end his, end his little... Yeah. I think, see, I think he survives. I think that, the, like I said earlier, that they bring, they, um, they cure his grayscale. Like, they use the, the magic. They cure him. I think they get reunited with Daenerys, and they're basically... That's how it wraps up for her this season, and they're sort of back to square one. She hasn't really... She's lost everything, so she's kind of got to start from scratch again. Oh, yeah. That's because, I mean, what else can they do? Unless she can convince the Dothraki to side with them, but then they're, they're, they're like, you know, their culture, they refuse to cross the sea. So, I mean, she isn't yeah. going to be able to convince their horses to get on the ships, which no, they no and longer also, have. There's not much chance for her unless she marries, well, she can't marry a Carl because no. they're not allowed to marry anyone who's a widow. And the only other chance she has is obviously Jorah and, <laughs> you know, uh, Dario can't take on an entire Kalasar. Well, multiple that they're there. So her oh. only real hope is that her, her that either she escapes or her her dragon shows up because her yeah. dragon could kill them all. True. If but he does what she tells him to, which he kind of generally she, doesn't. Yeah, generally doesn't do what they want them to do. So we'll see. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I think that's that plot line's the main one where I don't really know what they're going to do with her. Like obviously everyone wants her to cross the sea and wreck everything, wreck the White Walkers, mm. and mm. So on. and that's the other thing. We saw no White Walkers this episode. What do you think happens with them? Do you reckon we get a showdown with them yet? Do you reckon they make it to the wall this season? I reckon they'll make it over the wall by the end of the season. Do you reckon they get then to then like Winterfell? Maybe. I reckon they'll just at least get to Castle Black. At least get over that wall through it somehow because generally and, each season there's at least one big battle of some kind yeah. between two sides and i don't think it's going to be north versus south yet i, I think it will be walkers against the wall probably walkers against the wall or walkers against winterfell actually is probably more likely because you have the boltons there and they're a good adversary in a way yeah um, randy gets his like, face eaten by the giant leader of the white walkers that'd be nice yeah I would, I would be a pro White Walker at that point. <laughs> Me too. As long as you leave Daenerys, Jon, and Tyrion alone, yeah. you can kill all yeah. the rest. I'm fine with that. And yeah. obviously the I have wolves. A f- I have a feeling one of them, out of those three, might die by the end. I don't know who mm, it will be. I think it will be Tyrion. Probably. As I much just... as I love him as a character, I, I, th- I feel like he's the one who, get, who pegs it. I mean, Jon already kind of has. Yeah, John. I mean, he yeah. has. He is dead, but like, yep. they're going to bring him back in some capacity. So yeah, or, and I, mean, they can't... I think the worst thing was if they killed off Daenerys because that is the one that everyone wants to win in it. So that'd be yeah. the biggest fuck you would be to kill if her she... off. If they killed her, I'd probably give up on the show. I'd be like, <laughs> now nah, we're done. Yeah, pretty much because she's like the one person who actually she, maybe she doesn't make all the right decisions, right? But at least she has some kind of ethic sticks up for the people don't she Uh, yeah and that's what she wants yeah and she's like a very i i she just actually wants things to get better so and also 
because you've seen her come from so kind of little to so much as well. So yeah. it would be really hard to see her die. It would be really hard. Yes. So I, I guess we'll wrap up here. This is actually went on quite a lot longer than I thought. I thought we were only going to do like 10 minutes or something. We were going <laughs> for like 45. But so this has been the Great Game of Thrones Nerd Off, our spoiler show where we talk about what happens each week with, you know, with uh, each episode, our theories, blah, blah, blah. We'll be back next week to talk about the next episode. Let us know what you thought of the episode, anything you know what your predictions are for this season anything you liked or didn't like about the show and yes we'll see you all next week bye, bye.